Honestly, it feels like software development is undergoing a fundamental change. Just two years ago, we were shocked that autocomplete tools like GitHub Copilot could finish a function for us. Now we have Chet in marketing, vibe coding his SaaS app over the weekend, and honestly, it looks pretty damn good. Unfortunately though, too many software developers don't realize the game has changed beyond just using code generation tools like Cursor, Claude, Codex, or whatever came out last week. And what's worse is if you follow mainstream media, then you probably already think it's over for software developers. Here's the thing though, extremes are really good for social media and they're really stupid for your career or to live your normal life. But let's say this is true. Okay, well, like now what? What do you do? You could hide under a rock. You could enter a trade that's less likely to be automated, I guess. But what happens when they automate that? Or you could go just beneath the surface layer, past the hot takes, and past the clickbait, and take advantage of this monumental shift in how we work. I'm gonna share with you how I'm using AI and not using AI as a software developer, how I've seen my job change, as well as a specific technology I really think you should be paying attention to that doesn't get talked about enough. So when do I use AI? And my general thought is just because you can doesn't mean you should. So AI could 100% write your entire web app, data pipelines, back end, and it can do it super, super fast. It won't work, but it'll look pretty cool. The most concerning thing with AI code generation is that less experienced developers often can't tell the difference between code that works and code that lasts. AI tends to write brutal code that doesn't consider edge cases, business specific stuff, maintainability, also the environment, like where it's gonna be deployed, your team dynamics, the deployment process, CI, CD pipelines. There's a lot outside of writing code that is involved with writing code. And let's be honest, AI just writes too much code. You ask for something and it returns you way more than you want. Now, Cursor, in my opinion, does this a lot more than Claude, which tends to write less code, which I really appreciate. But these tools tend to just wanna go over the top and be really enthusiastic with the amount of code that they write. And they seem to forget this simple rule. More code equals more surface area for bugs. More code equals more liability. So here's my hard and fast rules right now for when it comes to using AI versus when not to use it. Number one is tedious work that I could do, but I don't want to do, right? Like updating types in a TypeScript project, breaking up a really big React component into multiple components. These are things I know how to do and I can easily instruct an agent to do, but I might not want to waste my time or my precious fancy hands doing it, right? Next thing is UI updates. I love it for this. I can drag and drop an image and have AI do its best to get me at least started. Sometimes it's awful, but usually it's decent enough. So it can give me a little bit of a canvas, a working canvas I can start messing around with. Next one up is prototyping. And in my opinion, this is where AI really shines. If I'm curious what a large refactor might look like, I can just have Claude or Cursor kick it off. A POC, a proof of concept, is a perfect use case for any scenario where you really don't care about the code quality. You just wanna see like, is this thing workable? Should I even explore this more or should I just like forget this and that was just a shower thought or something like that? That's a good use case to see, hmm, maybe this is worth exploring a little bit more. Next up is bug discovery. Code reviews with CodeRabbit have honestly been better than I ever expected, and this is not some shill, and I'm not sponsored by anybody at all, actually, so maybe hit me up if you want to send me a box of donuts, CodeRabbit. But anyway, from code reviews to thought partnering, I can ask Claude or Cursor maybe to poke holes in my logic, ask me if I've missed any edge cases, suggest database schemas, basically just validate my ideas or challenge my assumptions. For most of the problems we're solving as software engineers, they're not unique or novel. They've been solved a hundred times over. So if you're asking, hey, should I have a unique key constraint here or should I have a foreign key here? It can just help you think through these and give you some opinions and trade-offs. Then you can tell your own opinion back to the AI agent and it can either confirm or deny some of your suspicions. This can save time. I think this is a double-edged sword because these are conversations we used to have with people on our team and now you don't have to. I don't really know how I feel about that yet but I do know that this can be a major unlock, especially if you're working remote, just to get some feedback on your ideas. It's like a rubber duck that can talk back to you. And lastly, Code Whisperer. I worked at a pretty small company and I often had to work with code from the data science team. This was in Python, it included really heavy mathematical stuff and I'm just a lowly software developer that didn't understand this stuff. AI helped me understand some of these calculations, what was going on under the hood, helped me deploy something. I was able to deploy a Flask app on GC two technologies I've never worked with, and I got it done under pressure and actually worked pretty well. So that was really, really cool. Next thing, in addition to that, I could explain this to a non-technical audience. 
So when the CEOs are saying, hey, why is this API slow? I could actually write something that would explain why it was slow. I couldn't say, well, Firebase only batches up queries in 30 or less. And because of that, I have to do sequential operations. and Just a bunch of jargon that nobody wants to hear. It wouldn't make anybody feel smart except for me, right? It would make them feel dumb. They might not want to ask anymore. It just wouldn't help anybody understand the situation. So sometimes I'll write out like a really long technical argument or something like that, or I'll just paste some code and like explain this to a non-technical audience and maybe use some analogies, like some real world analogies. And this tends to hit pretty well people like this and it makes you look kind of smart and then it makes other people think oh cool now i understand and that's always better for everybody now here's when i tell my little code monkey time to hit the road right anything mission critical if the code breaking means a severe incident might occur then it's generally off limits in my opinion it doesn't mean i'm not going to use it at all it's just not going to be the first thing i reach for and i'm going to be a lot more critical of how much i use it and how much i manually review it afterwards it's probably going to undergo so much manual review that it's likely going to be faster and also make me feel a lot more confident if I just don't use AI at all in this case. Now, here's a weird one, and I really want to hear your opinions on this one. TDD, Test Driven Development. The jury's kind of out here, but I noticed this very sinister phenomenon when I used AI to write some tests for some code that the AI had also produced. It basically cheated. It hard-coded the return values. It mocked functions it was supposed to test. It's pure insanity, right? Now I can't trust the code or the test. So basically what happened is I said, hey, write this code that does X, Y, and Z. Now write tests that test X, Y, and Z. Problem was the tests always return passing values no matter if the underlying functions changed. So now you have a scenario where you change all your logic here and you could be fooled into thinking that the tests are actually passing when in fact they're not passing at all. They're just looking at some hard-coded values. So this was really sinister, really kind of creepy. And I'm like, ooh, good thing I checked this. I mean, that's what I'm supposed to do, but still, you know, what if I hadn't? Would have been really embarrassing. And lastly, when I want a simple solution, I generally don't like using cursor or Claude sometimes unless I have a very, very specific way I want it achieved. If I'm prescribing exactly what to do, then yeah, whatever. But if I just want a solution, I'm like, hey, you figure out a solution, I might not want to use AI because it tends to just be overly verbose. I don't need a rate limiter for this API, for this internal web app. I don't need a readme for every component. I don't need a useless comment or some stupid emoji above every line of code. It's just not what I want or what I need in my life. The TLDR is AI is like an intern. It's great to start off with, but increasingly less useful the more complex that things get. So now that I've gone through some use cases about when I do and don't use AI, there's a technology which I wish a lot more developers would pay attention to. And I remember in 2023, I was at this tech conference for Vercel, the company behind Next.js. And there was this guy on stage and he had this big slide that says the AI engineer of the future is a TypeScript engineer. And of course, Twitter went wild and jumped on this and everybody called him an idiot and said, what are you talking about? Python developers, machine learning experts. And I just kind of wrote it off and thought, okay, that was a pretty cool little marketing tactic and maybe some rage bait. And it kind of worked. People did jump on that. Then I joined a small startup with some really really top-notch people. Some of the smartest people I've literally ever worked for from some really big companies in tech. The entire app, along with the data pipelines to ingest hundreds of thousands of documents and API routes were all using TypeScript. We were also using a type of database which I'd never heard of before, a vector store, to retrieve documents we had scraped from the web and we were using this to augment AI responses that were being streamed to the front end. This was my introduction to RAG, and I was shocked at how simple it was to get started and how difficult it was to maintain correctly. Once you see how useful it is, you really can't unsee it. And I have a little project in the show notes that you can grab to learn more about this in a practical hands-on way because I like it. So once you see how useful this is, I think you're really going to get excited. It felt a little bit like I glimpsed into the future, right? So we were building this app for Fortune 100 companies using RAG, Next.js, TypeScript, and Vercel's AI SDK library, none of whom are sponsoring me, by the way. And it turns out a lot of other companies are also using RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. I believe, and it seems to be, the most practical use case for AI at the moment. But it gets a hell of a lot less attention because it requires some actual technical knowledge. And this doesn't grab headlines like, insert some CEO who's a lizard king says AI will replace 99.2% of developers in the next year or by next quarter or just in time for the earnings report, which is coming out. Now, here's where I think us as developers have a really great opportunity. It feels like all of a sudden everybody is an AI expert. 
and you as a developer are competing with CEOs and grifters on LinkedIn that claim to have the key to 10X your workflow. This is what happened when billions of dollars in investment meet economic instability at a time when tech bros have basically been elevated to celebrity status. You get this hype that we've never really seen before. It's like reality doesn't matter anymore. Sam Altman says AI replaces you in six months and no one pushes back. Zuckerberg says basically the same thing. The NVIDIA CEOs tells kids, hey, don't learn computer science or coding. Newspapers kind of realize, hey, developers are hateable people and they run stories about our downfall and CS grads flipping burgers. And how can you really blame them? Do you remember those day in the life TikTok videos where you had 24 year olds doing everything under the sun, but working and they were in these big tech companies and they made more than what it cost to buy a two story home in the Midwest for building React components? Perfect storm. Now we have managers and CEOs who have never coded anything in their entire lives telling developers to use AI because it will make them more efficient despite any actual proof so far that this is the case. Now, I'm not doubting or saying that there is no efficiency gain. I'm just saying it seems to be well overblown at this point. And I often point to this study from Cornell that showed that developers were 19% slower when using AI in certain cases. Now, this study is a bit old now. I'm sure there'll be more studies that come out and we'll get a more nuanced view, but I don't think anybody is 10Xing anything. Now your job is no longer just pumping out code, but it's explaining to the higher ups, the limitations of coding agents and tools like cursor and Claude. Maybe you've had this happen in Slack or teams or whatever. Someone says, why is it taking you so long to create a form? I just had chat GPT do this in one prompt. <laughs> now you have to explain to these people who have no business really writing code, why security, accessibility, complicated API integrations make something really simple take a lot longer than just writing a prompt. Now, as annoying as this can be, I think it's also good because for way too long, we just told people anyone can code, a monkey, your uncle who can't even open his Hotmail account, a child who can't multiply, anyone, right? And now I think it's fine to learn how to articulate what we do, the value that we create, as well as why things are not as simple as they seem. I think our jobs in the future are gonna involve a lot more education and gently letting people know just where the hype ends and reality begins. I think this opens up major opportunities for you and me as developers trying to climb up the ladder and get into leadership positions or just kind of embrace this new role slash period that we're in. You can kind of be like the Cyrano de Bergerac for the executive team. If you don't know who Cyrano de Bergerac is, then look him up. And finally, maybe, just maybe don't fall into the doom and gloom narrative or the overly optimistic roses and candy canes happy path. The problem with the internet isn't that everyone has an opinion, it's just that the most polarizing ones tend to get all the attention. I've had boot camp dropouts tell me that my job is at stake and that nobody is hiring. I've had career coaches who don't know what HTML is or how to do FizzBuzz explain to me that companies simply don't need junior developers anymore because AI can already do everything that a junior developer can do. These people might be smarter than me. They might even be better looking. That doesn't make them right. So just make your own opinions, use the tools, read the studies, understand what's going on just beneath the surface, and then draw your own conclusions. Good luck out there. And I always hope this kind of stuff is helpful. See you around.